Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Thermalright AXP 120 X67 white ARGB onto this motherboard here. So, this is a B650 chipset, so this is AM5. The AM4 and AM5 principles are basically identical, so if you're on an older AM4 platform, this is going to be exactly the same principles. So, we're going to go through today, show you how to install it, so you've got a bit of confidence if this is the first time you're doing it. So things you're going to need, you're going to need a crosshead screwdriver and from the actual accessories box you'll need your TF7 thermal paste, you'll also need your AMD fittings bag and also the two AM4 stroke AM5 brackets and somewhere to work on your motherboard. Obviously you need the cooler itself but we'll come to that. So let's get straight into it. So we'll start off with the simple parts. So we need to remove the standard AM4 stroke AM5 retention mechanisms, which are actually on the motherboard itself, the plastic ones. There's four screws on those. So just loosen off the screws and remove the plastic bracket. Put those somewhere safe in case you ever need them again. Next, we'll need the four pinky red standoffs. And you put one of those over each one of the exposed sections of the retention mechanism. And it should look something a little like that. Next, we'll need our two AM4 stroke AM5 brackets. And those just go over the top of the pillars we've just installed. With them with the curve facing towards the processor. Next, we're gonna need the four screws, which are in the AM4 bag and put one into each one of the standoff areas. Next, you can take your screwdriver or you can use your fingers. You can do them up thumb tight if you wish. It doesn't really make a great deal of difference either way. And just tighten them up until you come to a stop. And you should be left with something which looks very similar to this. Next on your cooler, make sure you remove the sticky label from the bottom. If you wish to, you can go ahead and clean that with some isopropyl alcohol. The choice is up to you. Depending on your setup, you may wish to orientate the cooler either with the fins over the top of your actual heatsink for your motherboard. This one's a little bit proud, so it does actually clash with that. So I'm actually going to turn it around the other way. And you can see there we've still got some clearance between the heat pipes and the actual heatsink on the board. You may be wondering if there's going to be enough room for RAM. The clearance on here is actually pretty decent so you can have some pretty tall RAM there and not have any problems. And also the side effect being is some of the air which is being blown down through these fins will actually keep your RAM cool as well if overclocking. Optionally if you wish to you can install a paste guard. There's a triangle on the top which matches up with the triangle over here. And this is just some silicon, which will prevent some of the heat paste going down the sides of your CPU. It doesn't affect cooling at all. It just makes it cleaner should you need to remove it. If you're doing numerous tests, I would strongly recommend getting one. I'll put links for them in the video description. Next, we're going to apply our thermal paste. I'm actually going to use some MX4 because this is just for demonstration purposes, but you can use whichever paste you like. And just put a smallish blob in the middle of the CPU. If you want to, you can spread it, you can do dots, dabs, whatever you choose. The choice is entirely up to you. Again, this is just for demonstration purposes, so I'm just going to leave it like that. The pressure of the actual cold plate over the top of the paste will squish it out to all the relevant areas anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Next, we need to do up the two screws on the outer sides. There's a hole cut out through the actual fin stack, so just put your screwdriver through there and do a couple of reverse turns so you hear a click. There's the click, and then you can do a couple of turns just to get the thread started. And then go ahead on the other side. And again, a couple of re reverse turns. And there's the click. And then just do one or two turns. And again, then all you need to do on both sides, just gradually tighten it up and do maybe two or three turns each side until you come to a hard stop. And there we go, we've come to a hard stop now, so now we can finish. Next thing to do is to install the fan. When it comes to installing the fan, it's probably a good idea to have a quick look at your motherboard and look at where your fan headers are. So on this particular board, the CPU fan header is this one here, and our addressable RGB is up here. So depending on your particular board, 
you may need to consider that when routing the actual fan cables. Grab the fan and with the cables, you can have them either off to the side, off this way. Again, it doesn't really make much difference depending on your choice of aesthetics. Either way, the clips are gonna go on absolutely fine. So I'm actually gonna do it this side. It's not gonna look particularly neat, but it will be absolutely fine. So there you go, it's gonna be on that side there. Next, we're gonna need our two fan clips. So these are the ones for the 15 mil rays. If you're gonna be swapping this fan out for one which is a little bit thicker, because this is only a 15 mil, if you wanna put a 25 mil one in, you can use the alternate brackets, which are included in the box, which have a little label on them, which say they're useful for the 25 mil. The clips are pretty easy to do. So just attach one into each hole, as you can see there. And then just with a little bit of pressure, just push this side bit down and it will lock into place on the side of the fin stack. Hopefully you can see that. Then we can turn the motherboard round to the other side. Obviously you won't need to, but for filming purposes, I do. And again, just match up these little holes with the little clips there, and that will hold in. And then if you want to, you can do any final adjustments to move the fan, however you see fit. And then either with a nail or a bit of pressure, just push that down and it should lock into place. Again, I'll show you that so you can see it. So it just locks into place underneath that first ridge. So the next part is to install the cables. So we've got our PWM cable. So our PWM header on the motherboard is this one here. So just push that into place. And of course, after when it's in, you can do what you like with cable management tuck it under the cooler, however you see fit. The next one is gonna be the addressable RGB. If you're using the addressable RGB version, you can plug it into the motherboard itself directly, or if you've got a case which has some kind of hub or header, you're more than welcome to plug it into there. So let's go ahead and put this one on. And that just pushes into place. And again, as we did previously, you can just tuck the wires into one side and uh, make it as neat as you like. And there we go, it's uh, yeah, relatively neat there. For most ITX enclosures, there isn't a great deal to work with, so just tuck the wires in however you see fit. And there you go, that is the, uh, the finished product. And I think it looks pretty darn good. And also again, we've got an absolute ton of room for RAM. So even if we're using RGB RAM or taller RAM, it's gonna be absolutely fine fitting in there. Okay, so there you go. There is how to install the Thermalrite AXP120- X670 white ARGB onto our AM4 or AM5 style platform. I think it actually looks pretty nice and considering the cost, I think it's fantastic value for money. Again, with your particular setup, you may find it beneficial to rotate the cooler 180 degrees so the overhang is over the VRM section of your motherboard, possibly cooling those if there isn't a heat sink on them. Whichever way you do it, it's gonna be absolutely fine. And also I would suggest installing your RAM first. I haven't here for demonstration purposes, just to give me more clearance for the camera, etc. But I would recommend doing it because obviously when that's overhanging the RAM slots, if you have it this rotation, you won't be able to get them in. So you have to take it all back off to start over. So do bear that in mind before you start. Anyway, hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also hit that chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.